What's going on everybody? Rob here. It's, I'm doing a little video on van life. See, this is my van right here. It's a Chevy Express. Okay, I got the seats out right now. I got to get it vacuumed up. I got to get it ready to go. But, uh, you know, I've been sleeping in my car, sleeping in my van for years, many years already. I had my Astro van, my 2002 Astro van. Uh, the seats folded down, but I would always have the back seat out in that one. And I have, believe it or not, I used to sleep in my car when I had a 2002 saturn sl2 uh it was a little easy believe it or not way back ago it was a little bit easier i had a limo tint on my windows on the back of the car all the back around the window of the car i i always had a zero degree sleeping bag but the sleeping bags now the zero degree sleeping bags now are way better than the zero degree sleeping bags back then because i sleep outside in the winter and everything let me tell you this though with the zero degree sleeping bag if you get a, a good zero degree sleeping bag right now and it's uh, uh, above 30 degrees, uh, you're going to be butt naked in that sleeping bag still sweating. So you got to kind of get your sleeping bags according to the temperature, according to where you're going to go. Uh, my van's empty right now. Normally, I can go ahead and I have uh, 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 two benches in there when I carry my grandkids around or we go anywhere. But I'm trying to get it ready because more than likely, I'm get, you, you get that itch that you want to go somewhere and that you want to do something. So I'm I'm thinking about heading where Chicago. I'm thinking about heading down to. I stay on the bases sometimes. So I can stay on Fort Campbell, Kentucky. I was thinking about going around Fort Campbell, Kentucky, and looking for some some raw land around Tennessee somewhere. Or uh, and then from there, I'd like to probably go to Pensacola. I always wanted to go to Panama City Beach. I never did, but it's going to be spring break the week I want to head out, so I'm not going to deal with Panama City Beach. Uh, I plan on being gone for a week, maybe a week and a couple days, but maybe two of the days in between, I'll stop at a hotel. So a couple things about van lifing that I found out, because I am a conceal and carry holder. This isn't about n none of that. Well, it kind of is, but, um, you know, I got bear spray i got a big can of bear spray and i got the blue pepper spray because when i travel i prefer to travel and not have to worry about being picked up and i'm I'm in a whole bunch of van life groups i got a lot of van life friends and man i just it, it's sad that there's one that he is from uh canada and he was driving down the east coast and he got picked up with a uh 10 capacity no a 30 capacity magazine in his car nothing else there weren't bullets in the magazine or nothing but the higher capacity magazines are illegal where he got picked up at so uh he got out and everything but three months in jail waiting three months in jail waiting because he had that higher capacity magazine and it was a carbon fiber or whatever magazine but there was nothing else he didn't have the gun the bullets the, the nothing with him but he got picked up for that and he got a uh, uh, put well he had to wait trial he couldn't bond out and it took three months you know so that's that's crazy you know they say well you could look for your reciprocal you could look for that you know a lot of federal campgrounds they don't allow guns on federal campgrounds or well you could hide it you could do this or you could do that or or you know i stay on military bases i go on military bases you're not supposed to transport your fire on the military bases so i just prefer me personally i got a can of bear spray it's like a pistol grip bear spray and it'll shoot 25 feet and i got the mace that are smaller cans but they'll die blue they'll die whoever whatever it says the gel it dies blue so i carry that and of course you're outdoors anyway so you always got knives on you and all that crap so that's one thing that i worry about is that i don't i don't ever want to be in the wrong state in the wrong whatever being pulled over being legitimate doing the right thing like you're supposed to do say yeah i got a firearm on me this that and the other here's my conceal and carry leave your hands on the steering wheel you know i don't want to have to worry about all that and then you get somebody with a chip on their shoulder that's going to be putting you through a little bit more bs now this is one of the crazy things this is one of the crazy things with me is that uh one of the campgrounds i was watching yesterday you know i'm looking there's i overlander look up i overlander it's an app and it's easier instead of them downloading you the files to open the map up and it'll show you the rest stops, the water stops, the dumping stations. It's pretty cool, actually. But look, I was reading because I'm looking at where I can stay, the campgrounds I can stay. Of course, they're not all going to be available because when I'm traveling, it's going to be spring break. So there's going to be some kind of few and far betweens. But they got the Flying Jays, the Travel Centers, the... Um, cracker barrels the walmarts the planet fitness you know a lot of people are planet fitness members because they could take showers since they could still work out everywhere they go some people sleep in the planet fitness parking lots because they're 24 hours just don't hang out there too long you know so uh 
uh, uh, this I Overlander does show that. And then you, there's people. The good thing about it is there's people that say when they stood at the uh, the campgrounds or the places and how it was when they stood. And and so one of the really cool things about that is is that they're updated. It says when the last person checked in there, how their stay was, how the facilities were, and all that. You know, and there's other van lifers too. You know, my van life isn't too conspicuous. It's a passenger van. Like, how do you sleep in that? I made curtains. There's curtains for every window in here, and I have a curtain. You see the black things across the top? The curtain actually comes across right here, and it seals off the whole van. So I could be sleeping in here. The side van windows are tinted anyways. So with the side van windows tinted, you go ahead and you can't see in. And, and the curtains on the outside, I, got, I mean, two-way curtains, what face the window is black. What faces the inside is the same gray as the van. So this way with your lights on, like if you have black on black and you turn your lights on, it's still harder to see. Because I got the battery packs with the LED lights, with the laptops, with the plugins and all that. Uh, so I, I, let me open, I'm off the door for my honey. So, so uh, with the iOverlander, I was reading yesterday and it's, it just boggled my mind that you know you could stay on rv sites and they got the electric the water and the dumping and all that or you could stay on tent sites or you could stay on primitive campsites and my thing was was one that i read is like you i have this i have the van i'll pay for the electrical hookup because we got the inverter to plug in somewhere but we don't have the water you know we carry our water with us with our zero water in our pitcher you know but um one thing that is my honey's coming around one thing that is is it just boggles my mind that a campground had it where they have rv with hookup and they have tent camping okay but the tent camping is a lower cost so if you pay for that tent camping and everybody knows now there's van life people live in their vans they recommend you buy the extra ten dollars a day for the van life parking it's basically rv parking you put your van there but they said if you pay if you pay for tent parking or a tent a tent site you have to put up a tent not only do you have to put up a tent you have to sleep in that tent you can't sleep in your van you have to sleep in the tent so i was like you know how how are they going to know if you're sleeping in the, in the tent? Are they watching you? Are they monitoring you that much? Me, myself, I would pay for the RC RV site anyways. But van life in is, it's it's a little bit hard. I mean, if you're staying at the, the travel centers and the pilots and the flying J's with the semis, the Cabela's, and, you know, it's louder. It is louder. You hear that, you know. But uh, for the campgrounds, I mean, a lot of people are camping more or staying not in the hotels and them prices are really going up it's getting kind of expensive so for some campgrounds it's like between 20 to 40 dollars right there per night that's per night still but then you got the other campgrounds that are 50 to 125 per night for the campground so at that point me and my honey are going to stay in the hotel room but for the 20 35 dollars a night maybe even 40 dollars a night i'll i'll stay with that i'll go with that uh another thing about van life is you know just it's forty dollars at Cabela's, and they got the poo buckets, and they're not really poo buckets per se. They have the seat that you can sit on. It's a five-gallon bucket, but there's a bucket in the bucket, and all you do is you line that with uh, you line that with a uh, I double garbage bag it, double kitchen garbage bag it, double kitchen bar garbage bag it, and then this way after you go in it, all you do is tie it off and you throw it in the garbage can. But normally for van life, you uh. You just really kind of use the restroom restroom before you're gonna turn turn in for the night. You use the restroom restroom. And then also what I have in the van that I normally carry is the pee bags. They're for guys and ladies. And they're bags that turn completely solid. They turn completely solid when you, uh, you gotta go that way or that way? Do you have stuff anywhere? Uh, the, yeah, so when you pee in them, you can't spill it because they turn completely solid and then there's a ziplock like a ziplock that you zipper you don't see in it it's solid and then you could uh go ahead and throw that away so so those are pretty cool that's what i always have those with me but the the bucket i'm going to buy for this last time because i was out in the van overnight and i had a, a, a i just i got an upset stomach i don't know if i 
ate anything wrong. So like at four in the morning, I'm driving around somewhere, coming in hot. I mean, I was looking because I, I said, you know what, forget it. I'm getting that bucket. I got the things all around here, this, that, and the other, yada, yada, yada. Now my wife, she hasn't stayed in the van with me or the car with me, you know, but she is, uh, 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 would rather a hotel with the shower, you know, that she could shower, that she could wash her hair. And me with the with the dude wipes, I mean, I could just wipe myself down and I'll be fine. And on the campground with cold water, I wash my hair, brush my teeth, you know, and I'm good. So with the Planet Fitness now, oh, that's gonna be another story. I'm up for ten minutes. All right, either way, this is something about van life. I'm gonna be vlogging about it a little bit. Talk to you later. Subscribe, like, and share.